Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Looks like we are back on the Kentucky Derby Trail this weekend. Absolutely, Matt. We have two Kentucky Derby points qualifying races this weekend, so that's what we're going to talk about here on Horse Center. One from Oklahoma and one from Southern California, Los Alamitos. I actually think the one from Oklahoma, Matt, it's a bigger, better field. So we're going to start with that. Let's swing out to Remington Park for the Springboard, Springboard Mile. The Remington Springboard Mile is a uh, one-mile race, of course, $400,000, Matt. And you see our morning line there, folks. Uh, we have Giant Mischief as the morning line favorite. But I saw a Remington morning line come out since then. And they have Echo again as the uh, as the early favorite. So it looks like those two horses will buy for favoritism here in the Springboard Mile. Matt, let's start from the rail out, and that's Echo again. Speedy horse for trainer Steve Asmussen. He sure looked good in winning his debut at Saratoga. He certainly did, Brian. Uh, and in the summer, uh, Asmussen brings a lot of his best two-year-olds up to Saratoga to debut. And uh, this guy didn't di disappoint by any means in a six and a half furlong uh, maiden special weight. He won by almost seven lengths. Yeah, he he uh, ran to his uh, hype there. He there there was talk about him before the debut. Big performance, one of the bigger debut performances by any two year old in the country. But then Matt. He went straight into the one mile grade three Iroquois at Churchill Downs a month later. And, um, you know, he, he, he was outside. He tried to get up towards the lead. He battled a little bit, but he gave it up pretty good in, in his second career start as a heavy favorite in the Iroquois. Yeah, it was definitely a disappointing uh, performance, keeping in mind what we saw at Saratoga and then being, being a heavy favorite. Um, I don't know. I guess the odds maker at Remington is giving a little bit of a, a, a home field advantage, the Asmussen advantage as a Remington regular. Maybe that's why he made this horse the favorite. Yeah, he's also drawn the rail and he's got a good uh, a good deal of speed. So uh, certainly eligible to bounce back here in the springboard mile. I'm going to throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, and you see right there uh, they're expecting a pretty fast pace, but Echo again on the rail is the horse that uh, is most likely to go out to the lead. Uh, I can't find the two on the, oh, there he is. I, there he is. Gunflash is way back early, Matt. Gunflash is a horse, I tell you what, especially if Time Form US is right with his pace projected, a, a horse that interests me a little bit from the Carl Broberg barn, a barn that wins a lot. Gunflash, the second gun runner in the field. And uh, looked good in his debut performance, rallying at six furlongs. Yeah, that's for sure. And you don't see that big red fast pace label uh, from the time form pace projector that often. So you, you got to assume this is this they're going to be going pretty quickly early. So uh, when we're thinking about betting, you got to think a little bit about the horses coming off the pace. Yeah, and, and I will be thinking about the horses coming off the pace and gun flashes an interesting long shot in here. Uh, the three is another horse we certainly have to consider, Matt. Uh, it's the son of Jimmy Creed, and Campfire Creed has run nothing but good races, and uh, he probably a little unlikely not to win both of the stakes preps for this springboard mile. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, the the late the most recent prep for the springboard mile, the Clever Trevor, I like the name of that uh, race. We've got four horses coming from that race into the springboard mile so that that worked well for the racing office there and uh campfire creed was second in the clever trevor and before that you mentioned that he was a he was the winner in the kip deville with a stalking trip the clever trevor was run on a sloppy track and he was only a nose away from the victory there yeah, absolutely. Campfire Creed uh, was a nice winner going six furlongs in Kip Deville. And then the seven furlong, uh, Clever Trevor, as you say, uh, was a sloppy track. He missed by a nose. So really close to winning both back on a fast track. We could possibly uh, expect some more improvement for Campfire Creed. Certainly 
uh, the most accomplished of all the local horses. Number four is another horse that interests me a, map, a little bit. Uh, Caleb's Posse, his sire, the sire of Lil Sweet Fang, was a horse who uh, liked to come late. And Lil Sweet Thing has uh, shown the ability, like his sire, to pass horses. He's coming off a nice allowance win over the track at the trip. Yeah, and it, and it caught my eye seeing uh, Caleb's Posse as the sire thinking back to what a really good horse he was, and then at the same time saying, geez, I haven't noticed that many horses sired by uh, Caleb's posse. But this Donnie Van Hemel runner, uh, it was a good uh, allowance victory going the mile. Yeah, and Donnie, uh, Donnie K. Von Hemel certainly is a, a trainer that knows how to win down there in Oklahoma. A little sweet thing is a horse I think uh, should be given some attention, especially in the exotics. Next on the list, Matt, is, of course, the horse we have as the favorite, the second choice on the track morning line, Giant Mischief. Trained by Brad Cox, Matt, uh, he won at first out at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Second race, though, was at Keeneland over Breeders' Cup weekend. And I think I've mentioned this before in the show, that it was one of the most impressive two-year-old races I've seen all year. And the horses, the main uh, combatants in that allowance race, seven brawling allowance race at Keeneland, are back. One here, one out at Los Alamitos. Giant Mischief has looked good in winning his first two starts. Absolutely, Brian. And the horse that you're mention mentioning that's going to run at Los Al, Arabian Lion, is one of the many, many, many Bob Baffert uh, promising two-year-olds. And uh, these two... Uh, went at it and uh, Giant Mischief beat Arabian Lion, but they were way, way ahead of the rest of the field. Yeah, Matt, it was some 17 and change ahead of the third horse and it yeah. wasn't a tiny field either. So a very impressive seven furlong allowance race. And we saw uh, Giant Mischief get the win, kind of edge away from Arabian Lion late there at Keeneland. We see again in this pace projector that he is uh, a horse with tactical speed, who can sit a little bit off and then uh, and then pounce quickly. And that might be a good spot for Giant Mischief in here. The six, Matt, is American Outlaw. He's done a little wrong in two starts. Uh, a nice debut win over the track. And then the son of American Pharaoh came back last time, stretching out to a mile and couldn't quite fend off a little sweet thing. But uh, we could see improvement from the six uh, third time out. We could, Brian, but he's uh, projected to be part of that fast pace in this field. So that could make the going a little tough. Yeah, my only argument with this pace projector might be that American Outlaw gets blinkers off. And uh, that could relax him just a little bit early here in his third career race. We shall see. Another horse projected to be uh, showing early speed is the lone Oklahoma bred in the field, Matt Ghost Hero. And uh, Ghost Hero has a nice record, but it comes against state breaths. Yeah, that's for sure. But uh, it's got a couple of uh, uh, wins in Oklahoma bred uh, stakes races. Likes the track. I guess he's going to, you know, uh, uh, be a factor in there uh, uh, early on. Yeah, he should be. Number eight, Matt, is the other Asmussen. And sometimes that other label works. Uh, in the horse's favorite, but uh, favor, but I don't know on this one. Money run. Uh, he's after he broke his maiden. He's had a couple chances. It seems like, including one over the track, and he just hasn't been real impressive. He looks like the uh, the, the truly the other Asmussen here. Yeah, uh, broke his maiden in a maiden claimer at Churchill Downs. He is a run happy and and. You know, as a two-year-old, run happies aren't always at their best. Um, but, yeah, the subsequent performances, he was fifth in that Clever Trevor uh, prep race that we mentioned and third in an allowance. But, yeah, in this spot, I don't like him. But maybe down the road uh, or certainly next year as a three-year-old, this run happy could get better. Yeah, and that third in the allowance race last time was well behind Little Sweet Thing and American Outlaw. So he'll have to step up. He's another horse who I thought could show some speed, but I don't know if Asmussen wants to run one horse at the other in here. So uh, he'll probably be a little bit off the pace. 
Another horse who should be at least within shouting distance early, Matt, and another horse who has done little wrong, and he's run in five career races. That's the nine. The outside horse, Wild Atlantic Storm. Uh, good form. He's the horse that uh, exchanged uh, uh, first and seconds with Campfire Creed in the last two local stakes races. Yeah, and this is in Iowa bred. So, uh, uh, little bit of a home track advantage there obviously likes remington park um so uh, gonna be in there and we'll set up the pace for horses coming off of it yeah wild atlantic storm has been solid in five career races uh, i believe it was the last three at remington park so a nice horse a nice iowa bred and iowa breads if you've been paying attention have been making just a little bit of noise lately so we'll see if another one can do that here in the springboard mile, Matt, uh, should be clearly the two shippers from the big trainers, Echo again from Asmussen and Giant Mischief from Brad Cox, look to be the two favorites. But there's a, a bunch of interesting horses that have been running lately locally at Remington Park. That'll go off pretty late. Uh, that'll be after 11 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. So a night race at Remington Park, Matt. The other Kentucky Derby points race we wanted to talk about certainly is the grade two. Los Alamitos Futurity. Uh, Bob Baffert has owned this race over the years. And um, safe to say, Matt, I, I think he's got a really good shot to own it once again. Short field, five horse field, going a mile and 16th. The last graded race for two year olds of the year. Baffert, 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 Matt. Yeah, he's got three of them in there, Brian, three out of five. And, and I don't know. I thought I heard that they were changing the name of the race to the Baffert Futurity uh, based on the fact that he's won the race 13 times going back to when it was also run at Hollywood Park. It moved from Hollywood Park to Los Alamitos in 2014, and Baffert went on to win the race every single time that it was run until slow down andy broke that streak but yeah brian with three out of five in here it looks like he's got a stranglehold on the race yeah that's a good point we're going to talk a little bit more about slow down andy next week when we talk about opening day at santa anita because he'll be one of the main participants in the grade one malibu but slow down andy uh, uh beat baffert uh last time a heavily heavily favored baffert when uh slow down andy uh, uh, beat uh, Messier down the stretch at Los Alamitos. So this is a race where horses that want to go a little bit farther can often do well. We'll, we'll see what happens here, but the Bafferts uh, uh, certainly look to be probably the three favorites. There's, there's one horse in the race that's not a Baffert that should get some money, but I'm projecting the three favorites will all be coming from the Bob Baffert barn. Are you sure about 13 wins in this race, Matt? I, In my notes, I had Bob Baffert had won this race 47 times. Is that, <laughs> that might be a mistake on my part. All right, let's do it from the rail out again, Matt. Uh, tall boy, tall boy, uh, 15 to one on, on, on the morning line there. I, I think he could probably be longer. Uh, his sire looking at Lucky sure was a nice two-year-old and three-year-old, but I just don't know if Tall Boy fits in with this group. That's for sure. But, you know, we have seen Calumet Farm spring some big upsets before, but I don't know about this one. Uh, longtime assistant Leandro Morrow for Doug O'Neill is filling in with O'Neill out on suspension. Um, tough spot for Tall Boy. Yeah, we might have said the same about Hot Rod Charlie a few years ago in the Breeders' Cup Futuri. I don't remember doing that, but we might have. So you never know, but Tall Boy looks like a true long shot in the field. Now let's start talking about the main participants in Los Out Futurity, starting with the number two, Carmel Road, Matt. And if we look at the pace projector of the Los Out Futurity here, you'll see that uh, Carmel Road, a son of Quality Road, could be the horse that gives uh, another Baffert horse the most attention earlier. The, or, or, or the most work early. We're expecting Arabian Lion, the outside horse, to have the most speed in here. But Carmel Road, as you see there on the time form US pace projector, uh, could be a horse that is out there early. Carmel Road's got an interesting record because he had some trouble in his debut and ran a good race. 
And then he stretched out a little bit and he won off for fun on the lead, did this on Equality Road. And then they shipped him cross country to Keeneland for the grade one Breeders' Futurity, thinking they might have a Breeders' Cup juvenile horse on their hands. And things did not go well in that grade one for Carmel Road. Yeah, Brian, you know, I, it, it's hard to judge that uh, the Breeders' Futurity. I think plenty of people can say, you know, I'm going to draw a line through that. He broke from the 14, from the way, way outside in that big field, that big field that turned out to be an extremely, extremely strong bunch. So uh, not an ideal post position, especially against the kind of horses that were in there. Um, you you kind of have to, to, to give a Carmel Road a big chance in here if you want to ignore what happened in the breeders futurity yeah great great points matt uh we talked a little bit about it with echo again uh in, in the uh, springboard mile where maybe that you know just not being able to hung outside a little bit not being able to get a, a lead struggling to get the lead or get near the lead and, and then you kind of uh a young horse will will back it up. You you could make a point that this was even a worse spot for Carmel Road, uh, farther out, and uh, certainly hung out wide on the first turn as he tried to get near the pace. You're right. It's, uh, there's no been no two year old race that's become more a key race than the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland, as we saw Forte come back and win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and then um, uh, Instant Coffee come back and and win the uh, uh, the uh, Kentucky. Uh, what's that called? The Breeders C C <laughs> can't think C of it. The Jockey Club at, uh, at at Churchill Downs. So two nice wins out of that race. So yeah, maybe we draw a line through Carmel Road. And his two races in Southern California look good. He's got plenty of speed. He is definitely one of the backwards. I had a hard time. I, I went through this morning line pretty quickly because there's only five horses, and I was going back and forth who the favorite will be. I just know a lot of people like Fort Bragg. And as I look at it, maybe I think I, I, I might have made a mistake. Maybe Arabian Lion is going to be the favorite and should be the favorite off what he's done so far. But Fort Bragg has been good in three starts, uh, getting better. He's actually finished first in his last two, Matt. Fort Bragg, a well-bred horse, like all three of these Bafferts, uh, uh, an expensive horse. Uh, he was an expensive yearling. In fact, I think the most expensive of the three, $700,000 yearling. Fort Bragg is an interesting horse uh, coming out of maiden races. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And and you mentioned that he did cross the finish line um, in a prior maiden race, but was disqualified for some uh, interference down the stretch and then came back with a, uh, to win his next one. Um, many promising horses on the, on the list for Baffert um, can't be ignored in here. Yeah, and he's a horse who's won, uh, unlike the uh, the horse we think he'll be buying for favoritism, Arabian Lion. He's a horse who's won twice, once he was disqualified, but at a mile or more. So Carmel Road has that going for him as we go into the mile and 16th. Uh, Fort Bragg has that going for him as he, we go into the mile and 16th, Los South Futurity here on Saturday. Uh, next on the list, Matt, we were talking about Fort Bragg getting taken down. Uh, in that maiden race two starts ago, he won by a little over length, but he clearly bothered the second horse, and that was practical move. Practical move got the win. Practical move in four starts has never finished first, but uh, ran a good race there against Fort Bragg two starts back. While Fort Bragg came, came out of this race to officially break his maiden next out, practical move for trainer Tim Yachtin went in uh, a graded stakes race and, and ran a pretty good race to be third that day. He did. And it was a pretty good field also, Brian. Um, you know, in my eyes, uh, practical move is the horse that has a chance to break into the Baffert trio at the end of the race and maybe uh, get a piece of the exacta or the trifecta and prevent a one, two, three, Baffert finish. Well, sure, sure. The, the This on a practical joke. Uh, it's interesting that I saw Chad Brown is one of the breeders of this horse, by the way, but yeah. it's not a practical joke. He's certainly the other horse uh, that uh, will 
get attention at the windows a little bit here. And yeah, if anybody can stop a Baffert uh, demolition of this uh, low south futurity practical move, looks like the one. Throw up the pace projector again as you see the Baffert horses, the three favorites likely are expected to be on the lead, second and third practical move, and then the real long shot tall boy. So practical move gets to see what happens early and see if he can make a move here at low sal, no pun intended. Finally, Matt, we go to the outside and we see the horse most likely to be on the lead, Arabian Lion. Arabian Lion was an impressive debut winner out in California. He too went to Keeneland. Uh, it was a high price seven furlong allowance that we already talked about on the show. Giant mischief uh, collared him in the early in the stretch. They battled for a while and and uh, giant mischief got the best of Arabian Lion late. But I have said that was one of the better two-year-old races I've seen all year. So obviously Arabian Lion is a big threat here at Low South. Yeah, I completely agree with that, especially when we keep in mind what we have said about giant giant mischief earlier in the show. That was a heck of a race. They beat a Pretty good size field by a tremendous margin. Um, I just get the feeling that uh, out of this trio of Baffert runners, that this is the one that the gray-haired Hall of Famer may favor. Yeah, Johnny Velasquez, he's got lots yeah. of speed out uh, in a short field outside in the five hole. Probably the horse to beat and uh, certainly... Just looking at the speed figures of the first two races uh, uh, it makes a lot of sense that Arabian Lion will be the favorite here. But uh, I expect Fort Bragg to get that quite a bit as well. All right, Matt. Uh, those are the two Kentucky Derby preps we wanted to talk about this week. Uh, if you haven't heard Extra Anejo, one of the top uh, early choices for the Kentucky Derby is, uh, is injured and off the trail. But uh, we expect to see some good things here on Saturday. Southern California, Oklahoma, and some of these horses to move up on the list of top Kentucky Derby contenders. Without further ado, though, let's get our top picks for the two races we talked about, Matt. Uh, let's go. You know what? Let's reverse the order, Matt. Let's uh, let's go with this low sal that we just talked about first. I think that uh, we might be on different horses here. Yeah, I think so, Brian. I'm going with uh, American Lion. Um American Lion, as I mentioned, I think it's probably the the horse that Baffert prefers the most. He did it. He broke his maiden in the way that a lot of the very good Baffert horses do that. They um, are odds on at the betting windows. They win on the front end, and they do it uh, impressively. American Lion did all of those things, coupled with that allowance we've talked about. I don't know. We'll see who's the favorite. None of the Bafferts are going to be a particularly good price, but I'm going with American Lion. Yeah, Arabian Lion, like I said, probably the horse to beat. But here's the one thing. Here's the one thing that I'm going to uh, look to beat. This is different ownership than the other Bafferts in the race. And and I could see uh, one of the other Bafferts, or maybe both of them, at least giving Arabian Lion something to think about early. Arabian Lion has never been farther than seven. That came in his loss to Giant Mischief. We're, we're both liking Giant Mischief moving forward, but his longest race was seven furlongs, and he got beat late in that race at Keeneland. So I have a feeling that somebody may be able to, kind of like Messier, may be able to beat him late. Maybe practical move. Uh, maybe Carmel Road, but the one I'm picking out is Fort Bragg. I, I just think this is the distance horse of this group, and he's got some good experience already. He's raced against some decent horses, and he's been a mile a few times already. So I like that. That's why Fort Bragg is my top pick in the low south futurity. In the springboard mile, Matt, we're both hoping that the morning line maker for Remington Park is correct, and Echo again is the favorite because we're on the same horse, and it's not Echo again in the springboard mile. Yeah, that would be nice if uh, Giant Mischief was second choice. Two for two in his career. Brad Cox, Brian. Brad Cox doesn't lose too many big races. And we already talked about how impressive that allowance victory was. Yeah, it, it absolutely was a big performance, beating Arabian Lion at Keeneland, coming off only a five and a half furlong at Horseshoe, Indianapolis. 
I like the breeding. Uh, he's a nice giant oak mare and a son of Into Mischief. I really like his first two races a lot. I also like the fact that he can lay just off the pace and then and then make a move. I, I think a mile will be perfect as he moves up in distance from seven furlongs here just a little bit to the mile. There are some local horses that can contend, and I will be using them in the exotics. But uh, for sure, my top pick in here as well is Giant Mischief. All right, Matt Shipman, that's the show for this week. Uh, we already talked a little bit about next week where we'll have a big opening day at Santa Anita, which is actually the day after Christmas, which is uh, still a week from the following Monday. So we'll probably be on just a little bit later in the week next week. But as always, we look forward to being here with you. Matt, before we go, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, a couple of interesting early derby preps here, Brian. You know, uh, uh, we got the Baffert Special and and the, and some nice horses at Springboard Mile in a con competitive field. Typically, we don't get, you know, Kentucky Derby winners out of these fields, but sometimes we get some horses that make the run for the roses. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think any, any of these Baffert horses at LaSalle and uh, certainly the top two, at least, in Oklahoma are horses that are, you know, they're talked about on this Kentucky Derby Trail. So should be an interesting Saturday. Folks, as always, I want to thank you for watching every week here on Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. Turn on those notifications. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. First, first of all, Matt and I appreciate it. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. And thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. Next week, we'll be back. Big opening day at Santa Anita. We can't wait to see you then. Have a good weekend and good luck.